Welcome to the latest instalment of the Betfred Road to the Derby. And this morning, I'm on course at Epsom, which you can see and probably even hear preparations are well underway. As well as preparation, we have some horses on site today from John Gosden, Arrest, who bids to give Frankie de Tory his last Derby ride and winner on his farewell tour and running lion who will run in the oaks and Ashim murphy rides today on the gallops we've caught up with frankie de Tory after riding arrest and Ashim murphy after riding running lion and trainer john gosden plus the clerk of the course on what sort of ground we might expect in just under two weeks time Frank Hanley joined by Frank Tory at Epsom this morning frankie just two weeks out or just under two weeks out from the betfred derby how are you feeling i feel great uh, we took a rest here, um, get a feel of the track. The, uh, you know, some, some horses get in the model around the turn, Tottenham Corner, because it's probably the only time in their life they have to run flat out, mm -hmm. going downhill left hand. So he had a feel of that this morning because it's a big, big unit of a horse, but he handled it really well. Uh, the Derby this year looks wide open, and uh, you know it's my last year, so I'm going in there with a with a chance. So I'm very excited. And has it entered your thoughts yet when you're at home or you've got some downtime? Have you thought about what you might feel like on the day when you come into the parade ring or, or the chance of winning? Of course, listen, even, not because I'm retiring this year, but any year you ride a derby is exciting. You know, for us, it's the most important race of a jockey's career. So, uh, you, know, you, you know, it means a lot. I'd be nervous, I'd be excited, but mm -hmm. it's part and parcel of the derby. You said it's wide open, Arrest obviously goes there with a strong chance, one on pretty testing conditions at Chester. Are you hoping for the same sort of ground? Well, if it rains, it be better for me. Mm -hmm. I can't control the weather. <laughs> Andrew, the crack of the course in general, does a great job. The ground always rides good. Uh, the last few years, been a few showers around, even road good to soft. Mm -hmm. What would be perfect for me, uh, but I can't control that. <laughs> At the moment, we try to get those still in one piece and, and, and roll the dice and hope for the best. Kindly joined by Ashim Murphy at Epsom this morning who galloped on running line. Ashim, did you get a good feel from her? I mounted her in the stable yard and she was super relaxed. I was very pleased with the way she went down. We didn't go crazy in the work. It was important. She didn't have a hard time today. But we rolled down the hill and she handled the track perfectly. And I resisted the temptation to give her a squeeze in the straight, but I felt like she did enough. She won the Pretty Polly last time and it wasn't that long ago. So I'd imagine she's very fit and it was about having a nice time away. There's no question about her class. Maybe a slight question about the trip? Yes, certainly. Her sire didn't stay a mile and a half, uh, although he ran very well in the derby. And she has a lot of speed. But let's find out. She's super relaxed. She'll give herself every chance of staying. And, um, you know, I'll know my fate coming around Tattenham Corner a little bit afterwards. Uh, I'll, um, I'll find out on race day. And the Foxes in the Betfred Derby, you must be pleased after the Dante. I was thrilled with him in the Albasti Dante. Uh, he did everything I wanted him to do and I hope he's a horse that's still improving. He's another one that may not stay. He's by Churchill. His half-brother Bangkok, who's by Australia, didn't stay. Uh, but we'll find out again on race day. And it's great to look forward to these classics with, you know, I hope are live chances. Very kindly joined by John Gosden at Epsom this morning. Both Running Lion and Arrest were out. John, what were your initial thoughts and, and feedback from the riders? I'm very pleased with them, yeah. They came here, it's, uh, it's quite exclusive and private today, wasn't it? <laughs> but a uh, nice canter down through up to the mile 110 yards, start to take a turn there. And then they work, basically they're working from the mile marker around to the half furlong marker, mm -hmm. seven and a half. Came down the, the hill in good, good order. That's the key point of coming, having a feel of the track getting balanced, getting on the correct lead, and they did it very well, so we're, we're delighted they came and very pleased with how they went. And how important is it for them to come here? Well, I think obviously for horses around at York last week, it's, it's too close. Um, and some horses probably can handle anything and have the agility. I think in the case of both of them, they're both quite leggy. They're quite, quite tall, and for a taller horse, often it's a little more difficult to get it coordinated and organised on this track, which is a very unique layout. It was very helpful. When I was with Vincent O'Brien, he always liked to 
come early and uh, cantered on the day before on the track, which I remember doing for him back in the 70s. So I'm rather taking my cue from Vincent. <laughs> and the Betfred Derby has been described by quite a lot of people as uh, wide open this year. How do you assess your chances? Well, I think it is because of this cold, wet spring we've had. Everything was behind, you know, and the ground was bottomless. Hard to work out quite who and what and where. It wasn't like we were running on, you know, good ground, nor we had the weather to bring the horses on. So it was bound to happen. And also it's right at the beginning of June. Mm -hmm. And so it's all come quickly on them. I assure you after the race, the order will be established. You've just got to pick which one. And if we're talking ground, is it a slight muddle for you with maybe uh, wanting softer ground Friday? And, or sorry, I, the reverse? No, I, I call it beautiful, good ground today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect ground for anyone. If you can't race on that, you shouldn't be racing. So if we manage to get the good ground we had today, it would be a great achievement by uh, the clerk, the course and all the staff here, but we couldn't be more pleased in the ground. I was here for the first meeting here mm -hmm. and it was very deep. Now joined by clerk of the course, Andrew Cooper. Andrew. Just under two weeks out from the Betfred Derby, how are preparations going? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I think we, you know, we, we spend most of our time looking at weather, weather forecasts, obviously, in this job. And the key thing, as far as that's concerned, is it does look as though the dry spell is, is going to continue. Um, we, we last had any rain here about 10 days ago, um, end of the sort of well, middle part of the second week in May. And the outlook does look dry going forward and possibly turning, uh, turning warmer next week as well. So uh, it looks, it's a year where sometimes nature takes care of things, you know, in terms of rainfall. Um, we, we will be sort of continuing an irrigation program here inevitably um, with that sort of weather forecast, which we began here middle part of last week. Okay. And how are, what, what, what is, the, is the main challenge with the ground trying to predict the weather? You mentioned that expecting dry spells, is, is that the, the, the main model of it? Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, I mean it's, it's uh, in this job, you know, you just, you, just, you just spend so much of your time sort of looking at weather forecasts and trying to think what that weather, how it will impact the track, you know, particularly obviously in terms of rainfall. In, in a way, dry forecasts are quite... Uh, not a bad thing for, for a clerk of the course because at least you can sort of do things in some degree of confidence in terms of irrigation because you're not sort of you know worrying about oh there's thunderstorms forecast in about four days time so do we water or don't we you know we're in a situation now where you know quite frankly you have to be watering else mm -hmm. you would be you'd be very firm ground at, and at Epsom you'd be very firm ground very quickly and I don't think anyone thinks that's the right thing for us to be you know running classic classic races Betfred Derby's Betfred Oaks on on very firm ground although ground you know officially sort of good to firm is is quite rightly perfectly fine mm -hmm. You'd be very pleased to know John Gosden was extremely happy with the ground today. If it stayed as it was today, would that be good news? Yeah, I, th yeah, I think so. I think I think these, the horses that have come here today have exercised on ground. I would I would basically call good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it has dried. It was probably on the slow side of good on Saturday when we last put a bit of water on it in preparation for this morning's gallops. Uh, dried, breezy day here yesterday, and, and being a sort of chalk-based course, uh, it does dry very very quickly here. Um, so you can. You can irrigate with, with some degree of confidence, knowing that it, 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 it will dry and settle down fairly quickly. But yeah, I, I think, you know, we're not far away, I'd say, from the ground we've had here this morning, from what, you know, you'd quite happily run any mm -hmm. flat race meeting on, really. It probably needed a bit of fine tuning around the edges. There's one or two bits that are still probably just on the slower side of one or two bits, that are probably just starting to get on the quicker side. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think, um, you know, I think in, in flat racing terms, I, I, I sort of think the ideal ground is ground on the sort of faster side of good. You know, somewhere in that sort of good to good to firm territory is, 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 is sort of ideal. And that's generally what we sort of aim for here at Epsom. We were also lucky enough to catch up with Jessie Harrington on her runner in the Betfred Derby, Spraywell. He's very well in himself. Preparations are going very nicely. We're very happy. Uh, we're very happy with him. Um, he did a nice bit of work last week. He's going to work uh, this week now, and and then he'll probably do a nice breeze Monday, Tuesday next week before he travels over. Probably travel over when uh, Wednesday night. And how impressed were you with that performance at Leopardstown? Uh, I was delighted with you know how he did it, and I was delighted. You know he travelled well through the the race. He was very relaxed. Um, he came up the outside and and quickened up well. 
and and hit the and hit the what I liked his last sort of fifty yards was very strong and it looked like he you know really stayed out through the line. He's raced only on soft or heavy ground, which may or may not have been you know your own plan. That might have just been how it happened with the weather. Um, do you think that is the key to him, or, or will he be fine on better ground? Is it a case of waiting to, waiting to see? Uh, well, listen, look, I've, I've watched him go up the uh, the the our uh, gallop here, which is and he, uh, which is quite quick, and he seems to have a nice, a lovely low action. He was a bit climby last year, but like as as he's got on to a three year old year, he's definitely come down in his action, and um, he's uh, uh, you know he he seems to flick up on that gallop. And enjoy it, um, you know. T- t- it looked the law was probably going it once, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and I'd be hoping that he will, you know. And I presume, and I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm pretty certain that Epsom will have sort of some nice ground for us, whatever happens. And what about the track? It's quite a unique track here at Epsom. Is there any question marks around the track, or is it, again, is it a case of waiting to see how he handles it? Well, he ran in Gore on first time out last year, and that's very undulating. Mm-hmm. You know, you go up the hill at the back, and you come across the top, and you come down the hill. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a um, right-handed, uh, a right-handed track. But he did that, and, and you know, you run down the hill, and then you, then you get back up uh, on onto the level again and finish out. Um, but you know, that is an undulating. Fairly tricky track for a horse first time out, and I think he learned a lot from that. And what about yourself and the team? You must be excited to have um, not only a runner here, but one with a decent chance. Well, you know, I think everyone sort of in the yard is sort of literally holding their breath, and you know, let's let's get him there first. You know, as you know, wherever it is now, ten days or whatever, twelve days till the till the race. Um, you know, an awful lot can go wrong, and an awful lot can go right. And we're just hoping that, you know, I think everyone's just sort of not not really getting excited yet, but like, you know, they're holding their breath slightly. It's a full show this week as we've also caught up with Richard Kingsco after his rides on some of the Derby trials from the weekend. So here he is looking at the Betfred Derby, Richard Kingsco now with last year's Derby winning jockey. Uh, third on passenger on in the Dante on Thursday. How did that race ride? Recognised probably the best trial on these shores for the Derby. Yeah, obviously, we said last week definitely looked like the strongest trial on form. Um, lots of positives to take out of the race, but obviously frustrations as well. Um, frustrations in myself, mainly. My horse ran great, really pleased with him, showed he's up to a high level. Um, I was pleased with him um, from from the get-go. He was in the stalls a long time. But he jumped well. I asked him to jump, and then he was responsive. Once I got him in behind, he settled nicely, moved through the race well, and then I just couldn't find him a clear passage, really. Once he did find it, he picked up nicely. So he done a lot really well. Things could have gone nicer. But, um, you know, hopefully it bodes well for Epsom. I mean, obviously, it's still to be supplemented, but he's the shortest price horse that's come out of the Dante in the Derby market right now. He's a shorter price than the winner of the Foxes and the second White Bitch. Obviously, you went for the same gap uh, as the Foxes, but as a race, did, did it ride like a real solid trial? Because, you know, looking into it, all 12 runners wouldn't be out of place in a Derby. Yeah, we went a nice tempo throughout. It was a, it was a, it was one of the smoother trials, I think, um, to get a better gauge on, you know. Um, being at York, nice track. We went a good gallop. So I think it did ride like a solid trial. And obviously the Wood Ditton form kind of got let down in the week, but clearly passengers improved from that initial experience the way he travelled at York. Yeah, I think you've got to be happy with what he done at York. Um, I certainly was. Obviously, as you said, he's not in the derby at the moment. I think that's still with Sir Michael and the owners. So I'm sure we'll find out in the next 10 days, couple of weeks. Yeah, fingers crossed you get the go-ahead. And at the music door, you, you were set out to make call an infinite cosmos, but blindsided by that little man Frankie once again. Yeah, so muddling pace. My filly wasn't the quickest away. Um, so I elected to get her forward 
and we were going no gallop so I ended up in front which really wasn't ideal for me um would have been nice for her to get something to follow but it just wasn't happening but to be fair to Frankie and Mr Gosden's filly showed a cracking turn of foot to come from where she came from and clearly enjoyed the better ground and she still remains an entry in, in the Oaks in Infinite Cosmos. Is that the idea? Yeah, I, they had a, a stage on uh, Monday, I believe, where... Sorry, it wasn't Monday. Today's Monday. It's uh, Saturday. Um, but yeah, Saturday to keep her right. in, and they, right. have, <laughs> they have elected to keep her in. Um, so I guess they're just keeping options open. And, you know, again, we've, got, we've, we've still got a couple of weeks to make decisions. And, but... Obviously, Sir Michael is keeping the option open for her. So that's obviously weekend after next. A little bit more immediate in the future. A horse that obviously means a lot to you. Desert Crown about to make his uh, reappearance in the Brigade Gerard. Uh, how is he? Yeah, he's good. I sat on him on the weekend and he feels good. I'm really looking forward to him. He looks a picture. You know, the staff have done fantastic with him. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Thursday. Uh, it's a, it, it's a great, great starting point for him. It is, but I mean, it, it for for a group three is is a strong group three if they were all to line up. You know, there's group one winners in there, and um, you know, it's nothing's to be taken for granted. Um, just look forward to getting on my lad and see where we're at. And obviously, Sir Michael started synonymous with bringing these horses along slowly. He only had three starts. His derby was his, his third start. I mean, how excited are you by what he could have still to come as a four-year-old? I'm massively excited by him. He's He's been fabulous. And like you say, we're hopefully only touching the surface. Um, but only time will tell. You know, um, this year will be an interesting year. Some Some big goals for him, I'd imagine. And... Hopefully we can we can go to all the dances. And it's a trade that's kind of continuing. I mean, recent years, Derby winners have stayed in training. There's a period where they all went off to stood and enjoyed themselves, but but now they are staying in training. Desert Crown is another one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the owner, Saeed Sahail, he he's a very um yeah, you know, he loves them for racing. So um I think he's keen to see what Desert can do. Thank you.